Monkeys, we're doing a movie review on one camera, sadly, because uh, all other members of the family with their cameras aren't here. Uh, but we're reviewing Joanna Hogg's The Souvenir, um, a, a sort of self-declared art house movie, wouldn't you say, Mum? Yes. I mean, by one of Britain's leading art house film directors, Joanna Hogg. Art house uh, auteurs, really. She's becoming an auteur, so things are all the same. <laughs> <laughs> No, I didn't mean that to that, sound like it that, sounded. That, but no, that, but that's the most sort of damning, yes, damning definition yes, of an auteur. It's yes. all the same. It's She's making the same film, film time over and time and over again. again. Yeah. Right down to it. Anyway, this is The Souvenir. It stars Honor Swinton Byrne, who is the daughter of Tilda Swinton. I didn't realise until after seeing the film. And also Tom Burke, who you're a big fan of. Uh, I I, I've seen him about, but I wouldn't be able to... Have, I couldn't have told you his name if he's I saw it. He's sort of it. dark and brooding in everything he's in. And it's a sort of semi-autobiographical film about Joanna Hogg's movie into becoming a filmmaker really wasn't mm -hmm. it it's a sort of portrait of her life um, going to film school and her romance really with Tom Burke's character isn't it what other films have she made before Archipelago is one yes yeah, set in the Silly Isles and again yeah. all, all I can really remember about that is that there's lots of big fancy rooms with people walking from room to room discussing yeah middle-class things. I mean, my take on Joanna Hogg, when I saw that this came out, was that I, she's very austere. Her, her, her sort of, you know, the trailers aren't, uh, they have no fanciness, no fun, no frolics, no no sort of frippery. Very undramatic dialogue. That's the other thing that she sort of is a master very of. Very realistic, yeah. Very yeah, realistic, yeah. yeah. It's a sort of social well, realism, yeah. a la Ken Loach, but for the middle and upper classes. Uh, absolutely. And it's kind of strange, it's kind of, it, it's, anti-cinema in some ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The thought of going to see this film slightly made me go, oh, and me. I thought this is gonna be like watching Farrow and Ball paint dry. Yes, Farrow and Ball though, <laughs> being the operative, operative work. <laughs> the operative yeah. I think what helped me with this one was the fact that it was about a filmmaker. And the charm in a way of the main character. Yes. She was just stunning. Honor Swinton Byrne, you mean? Yes. So, so it's about a woman going to film school and finding her creative sort of core mm -hmm. and, uh, and all that that entails. It's sort of set in the early 80s, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and it's also about her romance with Tom Burke's character, isn't it? Yeah. Who she meets and we're introduced to in the most frustrating of back shots in a, in a very affluent, which is very of Joanna Hogg, so it's yeah, a two shot. Back shots. You don't see his face, they're talking, you're thinking, who is this chap? And you, you garner that he works for the Foreign Office, uh, he can't reveal too much, very sort of Graham Greene like character, wasn't he? Um, and, yeah. And yet at the same time, there's a sort of a slippery darkness to him. You know, this is a very affluent life that Joanna Hogg's yeah. led. This isn't, yeah. you know, you're not talking about, and, and what I quite liked about this film was that I began to realize half of what this film is about is an existential problem with being quite privileged. Oh, okay. And I thought, no, and I thought that, you know, the, the dilemma for the main character in this film is is struggling with the fact, because she's wanting to make, she's, it starts with her wanting to make a film about the Sheffield uh, docks and uh, oh, steelworks right, and all that right. kind of stuff. That soon goes by the by. Well, that goes by the by, but in a weird way, her intention was entirely honourable and very, I thought very authentic, because when you're young, you do want to change the world. Yeah. You are drawn to lives that are different. Yeah. If you're middle class, you are drawn to the iniquities of society and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I found that quite believable, that her, her intentions were honourable. Mm. Uh, and she wanted to almost shed the privilege that she had from her sort of stately home and her sort of farming rural lifestyle and what have you. Mm -hmm. And I found that the I found that the film's most interesting stuff mm -hmm. was was how she contended with that. Because actually Joanna Hogg is all of those things. And when I think of a Joanna Hogg film, I think this is a film for incredibly posh people in Islington. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel that? I do very much, and, and it's sort of a standing joke with people that know me that a, a Joanna Hogg film away, like whichever the one before this one was, yeah. when I was talking to somebody about it and I said, oh, I can't stand Joanna Hogg, and they said, oh, yeah, but that's just because you're, you're prejudiced against the you're middle chippy. class. Against the middle classness. Right. The classness of it, and in a way, that's true. I mean, I suppose it's just that... They have nothing interesting to say to me. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, it feels like very first world sort of dilemmas yeah, and problems. Yeah, you know, sort yeah. Of, sort of worrying about how to find one's creative source and, and, and sort of fretting over storyboards. And, you know, it's, it costs a lot of money to go to film school and, and all that kind of stuff. But what I liked about this was this is not just a story about the sort of creative birth of, a, of an artist, mm. which is essentially what it is. It's also about an incredibly dysfunctional relationship. And it's yeah. about addiction actually. Where this film was slightly different to me from mm. her others and what I liked about it were the beginning scenes where you know she's sharing her own flat with a guy mm. who's from a different class 
and who like is taking the piss basically. Yeah. And for a minute, I could forget the middle classness of it. I right. think that's the thing with her stuff is you can never forget it. I felt the director was out of her league there. I felt that those weren't authentic at all. It, it felt like she'd hired some people who spoke with a bit of a Cockney accent. Oh, did you? And they were kind of doing what she thinks kind of middle, uh, lower, you know, normal people do. Whereas I thought where this film was actually at its most comfortable was where it was the most unrelatable in a sense, but probably relatable to people from that class, which yeah. was the world of privilege, the world, and I, so I thought this was a really unique take on addiction. This wasn't your classic kind of spiraling, chaotic. This was an incredibly well-dressed, tickety-boo man at the foreign office leading this sort of life, trying to maintain this facade in this sort of upper-class milieu. Um, and yet what you saw was actually that he, you know, track marks on his arm, she was so innocent she didn't realise what they were, and gradually the degradation of their relationship yeah. does reach that rock bottom of, of literally junkies coming out of the flat. Yeah. I thought there's a lovely cameo from Richard Ayoade who plays Tom Burke, the love interest, um, the drug addict's uh, yeah. friend from, from college, is that yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and he sort of reveals the fact that he's a drug addict. I yeah. thought that was quite a, quite a good scene. It was well handled, that, yeah. well written. What, what was good about it was that the actors, so like I suppose the three main actors, yeah. um, were acting so naturally themselves. In, in terms of what they what they had to say, it was almost like they were improvising. Mm. They didn't, they, yeah. it wasn't sort of heavily scripted. Say the scene where they're sharing a bed, Tom Burke and... Yes. Uh, I mean, I thought that was really well done, you know, yeah, like this yeah. is the line, he's yeah, yeah. charming and funny and you don't get the idea that he's putting any pressure mm. on her and she's sort of innocent and mm. blah, blah, blah. And it's fun. It, it, it sort of still sits within the tradition of British filmmaking. Yeah. So it is still socially realist in yes, that sense. Yes, yes, And yet it's completely poles apart from the work of, say, Ken Loach or Mike Lee, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. But in the same way, there is that improvisational feel and I, mm. and I quite like that. Um, I, did, I, I know you found it quite cinematic. I don't, I know, and I know people champion Joanne already on these three films that she's made as kind of I don't find her massively cinematic though there were little moments in this film where I don't know if you noticed they sort of within a scene they would cut to handheld slightly grainy yeah. footage of a situation yeah. and and that really interested me I thought that was a real sort of they were little moments they weren't regular so it's not like you could have expected them or predicted no, them no. but they would take you sort of almost closely into something or yeah. directly into something or get a shot of someone and they, they suggest a sort of psychological sense to the film too yeah. which I quite like so I, you know there are little flare, flares in there I but mean I, I, I think I think stylistically she's stunning I mean yeah. I've got a bad thing to say I mean but, but but again even in that way I feel that I'm seeing all the tropes that we know are stylistically mm. you know a, a, an image of a mirror in a mirror in a mirror yeah. sort of yeah, idea yeah so it looks like a painting and, yeah and, and, and in a way uh. that's all beautifully handled beautifully you know focused beautifully this yeah. that and the other but I almost want to shake it because, um, yeah. yeah, the bits that you just talked about are by far the most interesting mm. where you get, you know, you feel like you're getting a yeah. different idea. It's a idea. bit scratchier. Yeah, but scratchier. Yeah, that's and a I good found thing. the sort of passive camera, I think it's easy to lean on just a passive camera yeah. and say that's stylistic because there were actually structural lines yeah. in any shot. Yeah. But yeah. actually, has she, I didn't feel I didn't feel as much care. I felt more care could have been taken over the, over, over the general cinematography yeah. of yeah. the film. But I'll tell you what was different about this film, and I would, you know, say this to the end, is the, the good girl the main oh, girl yeah. who's Tilda Swinton's daughter, daughter. is charming I Phenomenal. mean she's, she's absolutely amazing the whole film rests on her mm. the camera's on her face most, most of the time, of the, time yeah. um, the plot for what it is which isn't mm. much wouldn't stand up at all if she wasn't so good at absolutely. conveying it absolutely. and you believe what she says that you know that, yeah. that this ring of, of marks on his yeah, she's very innocent and very yeah, naive very and very innocent. trusting and he's tapping her for money all the time. Yeah. Oh, would you, I thought Tom Burke's character was very well drawn. Oh, yeah. He was yeah. sort of both predatory but at the same time vulnerable. It, that's very true. People who are fans of his, and I think they're an increasing number, but will we'll sort of say if there is any criticism of Tom Burke, it's that he keeps playing the same role over right, and over again. He's right. sort of dark brooding and yeah. never you never quite know what you're yeah, getting. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. very good at that. I did like some of the scenes. There's a lot of scenes in film school where you hear people talking about filmmaking. And that's an indulgence for someone who's, you know, loves films, loves making films and all that kind of stuff. That's a real indulgence. But but within all of this I do worry that if there's one word I think most people will feel when they go to see this is pretentious. Yes. And I do think it's a problem with Joanna Hogg's work. There's something 
alienating. Well, that's what I mean. There's yeah. something about it that sort of holds your arms length yeah. and sort of says, you know, we, we, who we, has aloofness. these lives? Maybe aloofness is the yeah, I do, yeah. You know, I don't think this is relatable to virtually no. anyone going into the cinema to watch it. But then, as I was feeling that, and I felt that that was a criticism of the film, and it's possibly why it won't do, I don't think, particularly well, even on, in art in house own, terms, yeah, terms, is the fact that if this was a French film. Oh yeah, Mark we'd all be jumping up and down with joy and saying, we, there's, "There's no issue with us watching any number of films as film lovers about French writers, French playwrights, French filmmakers." Pedro Almodovar has a film out at the moment about Antonio Banderas playing him as a Spanish filmmaker. That's de rigueur if you're European, mm. but because it's British. Yeah, but the British don't talk like that. No. It's, the Spanish and the French do endlessly with for emotion. hours with emotion and everything they say is interesting. But that, <laughs> yeah, I suppose that's what I mean about austere. I think it's emotionally austere and I think that's a symptom of the class. So, it uh, is uh, class. You class know, what you're, what you're striving for in this film is, is you d you're digging beneath what's unsaid rather yeah. than what's said. Because, of yeah. course, the, the thing about the upper and middle upper classes in this country and the, and the landed gentry and the you know rural community is nothing stiff upper lip. And you felt yeah. stiff upper lip all the way through his addiction. Yeah. Right. I mean, the only moment where the sort of the mores of social etiquette were sort of punctured for a minute was when Richard Ayoade reaches across yeah. the table and says, how did you two tessellate? That was shocking. And I felt it was her shocking. shocked, You felt her you? shock, and, it, yeah. and it, he kind of ripped through it by saying he's a heroin addict. Yeah. The whole thing smacked of an Oxbridge Incestuous. elite. Right down to knowing that the lead actress is also Joanna Hogg's goddaughter. You, there's that sense that British cinema you know, you want all types of films to be able to exist with British yeah. film, but I do think this is about as unrelatable to the majority of people as you could get a film to be. Incestuous, it has nothing to say, I feel, mm. and maybe I'm wrong in this, that, you know, middle stroke upper class people's feelings are just as important as anybody else's. Mm. Um, that might be true, but by the using Joanna Hogg's films as a, as a sort of thing, I don't think they are. I think I think there there are things that drive them are whether she can get to film school. Okay, that might be interesting in the abstract, but it mm. is not. Yes. You know, and okay, they give us the they give us the um, drug taking as a sort of mm. side issue to that, but somehow that doesn't convince either. Mm. It's, it's not. Um, the characters are charming. They're well written. They're well acted. Yeah, beautifully acted. But it does not move me one jot you know there's something alienating mm. so alienating about it well i think it. i think you're right i mean Sorry, i do i do no 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 i think you said that beautifully and i and i think it's it, it does feel rarefied so this yeah, film is a rarefied, rarefied experience yeah. i mean it would be like me making a film about my struggles to go to film school mm. i mean who the hell i wouldn't expect anyone to be interested no, in which that would i suppose be important in a sense to you, but nobody simple, else. yeah exactly this film just felt a little bit like an indulgence that an indulgence too far. It's, yeah. it's, it felt overindulgent. It, well, it did. I don't quite agree. And they're making my... a sequel. Was it a disappointment? Did it surprise? She is. She was astonishing. She, she's. I mean, I keep using the word charming, which doesn't give an indication of just how sweet she is somehow and natural. And um, uh, it would all be nonsensical if she didn't yeah. convince us. The yeah. she's the thread that goes through it. That's the truth. Um, visually and technically. I, I, I have nothing but good things to say. I like looking at her films okay. as an object. Right. But in terms of them talking to me, what would I give it? I'd give it a 4.2. Wow, that's so specific. 4. And it's quite 2. low as well. Yeah, as well, yeah no, I like it? a four point. We haven't had a four point two. Look no, at it. Look I feel the, we have. The slightly I feel Asperger's it's sort of side of my <laughs> four point two. Brilliant. My response to this film works on two levels. There's the self-indulgent filmmaker in me who genuinely liked the idea of watching the story of any filmmaker. I mean, I could not find that boring. I'm just fascinated to see how filmmakers develop and grow and all that. So I liked all that sort of stuff. I loved all the film school sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, I did find it achingly self-conscious, even in its improvisational scenes. Yeah. I thought, you know, you could feel the hand of the director and say, right, this is an improvisational scene, and I felt it. Yeah. So it didn't feel as, as socially realist as I think perhaps it thinks it is. No. I thought the actors were sensational, and I thought the actors were at their best when they were not talking or improvising. It was very natural, very undramatic dialogue. Yeah. I then sort of put my sort of popcorn junkies cap on and think, would I recommend this? I think the vast majority of people will find it 
painfully boring. Yeah. Um, but also uh, incredibly, it's just incredibly spare and it's incredibly sparse and it's incredibly, I, I will re reuse the word austere, it's yeah. emotionally austere. Yeah, so no, you're that. not accessing, even when things go terribly wrong in the drug taking, it's, it, it happens. Yeah. But because of the austerity around it emotionally, you're, I was struggling to really care. Yeah. And I, I wanted felt, to care more. Yeah, sorry, this is your summing up, but I did feel that the one thing where she sort of, in terms of the acting and writing that she didn't have confidence or that wasn't quite mm. true was were the final addiction scenes yes yes it, so it was like she was working in the dark there yeah, yeah absolutely so you didn't get any of that say like with beautiful boy or those scenes where yes. you feel they really know what they're talking yeah. about that was the sort of add-on I felt yeah, the yeah. addiction I was. almost felt the film suffered from the idea which is quite an upper-class thing of too much emotion is a bit Bit, yes. a bit mucky. Yes. And a bit sort of, a bit crude. Keep it buttoned up. Keep it buttoned up. And I felt that the film still kept it yeah, buttoned I up. Did. And I, I, I was kind of waiting for a bit more of a rip or a tear or a rupture emotionally for mm. all of the characters. Because yeah. in a sense, even the, even, you know, Tom York's kind of, Tom York, he's Tom a singer Burke. of radio, <laughs> Radiohead. Tom, even Tom Burke's sort of fall from grace happens off camera. Yeah. I just found... It, it, it almost felt foul of the very buttoned upness that it was trying to present. Yeah. But I think I'd probably give this a four out of ten. Oh, even lower yeah. than me. Yeah, yeah. I right. gave it the point two. Yeah. <laughs> For more film and family fun, don't forget to click the subscribe button and make sure to click the bell to never miss an update.